I would say that one of the most exciting developments of ASCO in 2014 was these third generation uh, EGFR inhibitors, AZD9291 and Clovis CO1686. They were presented back to back at a special session that really suggested that we've finally broken through an impasse that's existed for a decade or more since we first identified the patients who have responded so beautifully but transiently to the first generation reversible EGFR uh, TKIs, mainly gefitinib and erlotinib. Uh, we've seen great responses in those patients, but it slips through your fingers and then even during the time that patients are benefiting, they're spending a lot of that time wondering what they're going to do next. And we've not had a good answer to that question. We've tried combining with chemotherapy. We've tried adding other things sometimes. And there have been some encouraging leads, but nothing that has really been transformative until now. And both of these drugs, AZD9291 and CO1686, demonstrated response rates in the range of 50, 60 percent. They are also showing that the activity is clearly greater in patients with a T790M mutation, which is associated with acquired resistance to first-line EGFR inhibitors in about 60 percent or so of patients. So not all of the patients, but uh, most, or at least a at least half, and the response rates are higher uh, in the 70 to 80 percent range, perhaps in those patients. So this is important because first it gives us a clear incentive to rebiopsy patients when they develop acquired resistance. That case had not been made that conclusively, but now that we have an answer to the question of what are you going to do exactly with this information you can use that to really clarify the probability that a patient will want to pursue one of these agents, certainly once it's commercially available, which we hope will be, will be very soon, but right now to pursue in a trial because these are so attractive, I would say, that it's worth patients traveling, whether it's across town or on a plane, to pursue them. The value proposition is very high. These agents are uh, generally very well tolerated. In fact, they're selective enough for the EGFR mutation as opposed to the wild type that they really don't have the, the side effects that we typically have associated with EGFR, namely rash and diarrhea, that, uh, that has been a nuisance if not a deal breaker for patients who are on first-line agents over a long time. So this is in itself for these two drugs a big change and for what it uh, the omen it provides of finally being able to offer new things to patients who have been progressing and we've only had hand-waving options for over a decade it's a great step forward.